Greetings from TV AIBD. Hi, this is Palomina Pradasam, and today we are connecting with AIBD, talking to a very interesting personality. Well, he is an engineer turned a serial entrepreneur. We're talking to uh, Mr. Apameya Radhakrishna. He is the CEO and co-founder of the app called Cool, which is making waves right now in India. Hi, Apameya, how are you today? Hi, Philo. Thanks. I'm doing very well. And uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you. You're an award winner with uh, the Indian Innovation Challenge uh, or Atmar Nirbar Award India. And I guess that's a very prestigious uh, innovation award uh, you know, that you've received in 2020. So congratulations. And uh, Thank you. Thank you, Abhimaya. Um, the thing is, uh, Koo is something, um, you know, it represents a bird. So I think it's uh, an Indian version of Twitter, as it's being told. So why did you choose the name Koo? Yeah, so, uh, you know, our observation was that, you know, uh, expressing one's thoughts and opinions uh, across the world was uh, heavily uh, skewed towards those who knew English. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, you know, everybody has a voice, uh, freedom of speech is for everybody, irrespective of language. And uh, that's the reason why we started the journey. Uh, and because it was about expressing and sending various kinds of messages, uh, you know, to each other, uh, you know, we, we thought that, you know, the best representation of that is a bird. Uh, and we wanted it to be happy messages, uh, respectful and meaningful messages. Um, and uh, yellow is a significant color denoting happiness. Uh, so we said, okay, a yellow bird is the best way to uh, denote uh, happy messages being sent across to one another. So that's that's why we chose the bird. And the sound of a bird is coo. Uh, so hence everything came together like, that way. I see it's such an exciting name, right? Coo app. And uh, the first time I heard about it, I said, oh, okay. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really a nice innovation. And um, yeah. And and what, how is Coo different? Uh, you know, because you said multiple languages. If you look at Twitter, it's in English. So why did you feel that uh, there's a need for this? You know, yeah, I think our primary uh, reason has been language and we've innovated uh, to become local uh, in that way, uh, you know, creating uh, in, in Indian languages and non-English languages is, is extremely difficult. So we made it easy. Uh, so typing in, uh, in Indian languages is extremely easy on Ku. Uh, you know, also finding people in your own community who speak the same language is easy on Ku. Uh, because we're putting, making creation in local language easy and finding people easy, the topics and, uh, you know, subjects that are spoken about are very localized to that language community. Uh, you know, while the internet is filled with, uh, you know, a lot of international trends and national trends, uh, the hyperlocal trends, which, you know, what people really care about on a daily basis was missing. Uh, and that's what we have enabled uh, through our unique approach of localizing the product uh, for local languages. So that, yeah, that's yeah. how we're significantly. I think that's an interesting uh, innovation as called by your prime minister, uh, Modi, that uh, he's looking yeah. at Indian local enterprises as well. So I guess uh, cool. Uh, you know, it's fulfilling uh, that uh, Indian uh, local enterprise category. And of course, it is the largest Indian micro uh, blogging site at this moment. And you said languages, right? Like how many, India is such a big country with so many languages. So how many languages are actually uh, people um, are communicating on Ku? Yeah, so there are 22 official languages of India. And, uh, you know, we are live in eight languages hoping to get to 22 uh, languages by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we are we're basically about communicating to one another in local language. And it's very important for us to, to get all the languages which have significant population speaking, uh, you know, live on the platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also looking to make sure that we, we help not just India, but several other countries across the world who have local languages as a predominant language being spoken on a daily basis to be to also be able to you know form microblogging communities in their respective uh, countries uh, so connecting every country deeper uh, you know on thoughts and opinions is what we do at Ku. 
I think COVID is a very interesting uh, idea because it not only uh, helps people to sort of chat, but it also creates that local community uh, among the people who speak the languages, right? And, and that's yes. really exciting because today you're talking about uh, people always want to be connected, they want to share. And uh, these are things that we are seeing uh, with um, what do you call that apps like this, where people really want to connect, want to share, and uh, you know they want their voices to be heard. So I think uh, what you are doing is creating a global uh, Indian community. I mean, is school only open to those in India, or is it open to Indians everywhere? No, it's open to anybody to uh, download. Uh, hmm. Right now, what is live is uh, you know Indian languages and India. And we also have one other country, Nigeria in Africa, uh, where again, we're, we're uh, looking to enable local languages which are spoken in Nigeria. So anybody who wants to enter either the Indian language communities or Nigerian language communities, they're free to do so. And going forward, uh, you know, we will be enabling various other countries, uh, including, uh, you know, uh, many countries in the Southeast Asia as well. Uh, which have a lot of local languages being spoken. Okay, so that's looking at it uh, from a different perspective, like how you're going to take your business further. Uh, Aprameya, you are such an innovative person, right? You are an entrepreneur, you started Taxi for sure. And I think you are also very young uh, entrepreneur, I must say, right? But uh, startups have always been um, your thing, right? How did you, um, what made you go into this area? Like, uh, how did you just venture into this? entrepreneurship is something that you know i wasn't thinking about all the time only when you know once i did my mba from i am ahmedabad uh, i started thinking about you know various ideas uh, because i was putting in a lot of effort at my day job uh, as an employee uh, and somehow i just felt i had a lot lot to offer but you know the company uh, that i was working with uh, had limited uh, use for all of those thoughts uh, so that is when I started talking to my friends, uh, you know, pitching ideas to them saying, okay, this is one idea we can do, second idea we can do, third idea we can do. And uh, finally, you know, one of my friends, uh, you know, agreed and we started off Taxi for sure. Uh, so it, it, is, it is serendipitous, right? Uh, it wasn't a strategy. It wasn't something that I was enthusiastic about ever since childhood or anything like that. It is something that I've learned in my journey as I progressed, as I made observations about how the business world works. And uh, since I had, uh, you know, a lot of ideas and a lot of uh, energy uh, and enthusiasm, uh, I thought, you know, doing something on my own is the best way for it to come out. Right. So that's how I entered entrepreneurship. How did this shift come about? I mean, how did you, what made you, um, you said you had a day job, you were fed up perhaps, or you had a burnout syndrome. I don't know, but what triggered uh, you to go into startups? And then now there's no stopping you from what I see. Yeah. So uh, I think ever since childhood, I, I've always been attracted to new environments, mm -hmm. new things. Right. So, you know, I hate being stagnant. Uh, I love progress. I, you know, even in my life, coming from a middle class background to running one startup, then starting another, investing in startups, you know, I, I've seen a gradual progression. The one thing that is constant is, for the human race also is evolution. And the all of us have to strive to evolve in each of our lives also, right? Uh, one of my mottos is to get 1% better every day no matter what you choose, right? Uh, so I think the only way to do that is when you're your own boss. Uh, so that is one inspiration, right? Uh, and a natural thing, tendency for me to do. Second, you know, I started reading about various success stories uh, like Flipkart and Redbus and Nokri. Um, so that also got me thinking, saying, okay, these are people, students, normal students, who have good education, uh, who took the risk of doing something, and that is what is making them succeed. Uh, so I just wanted to give give myself a shot, right? Uh, so also, you know, education, good education gives you uh, the ability to take risk. And, you know, I so I have an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad. So 
even if i fail yeah. with some whatever i do i can always go get a job go so back, that yeah. risk is taken care of yes and you know the first risk pays off then your risk take, taking ability increases you'll mm-hmm. take a bigger risk next, next time because you always have a fallback so i think it's very very important to see small successes every day and keep making progress and uh, i th- i think i'm kind of addicted to that now so you know i i just want to be uh, you know part of stories that are changing the world uh, part of entrepreneurs journeys as an investor uh, which i myself won't be able to execute but happy to live that uh, you know success through somebody else's uh, efforts uh, and my little contribution as an investor so i think that's what i look forward to and uh, you know i love new ideas new thinking meeting new entrepreneurs mm-hmm. uh, i feed off you know very very positive energy very well yeah i can see that and then uh, you know like ku cool is something which is uh, keeping uh, rains and creating a positive energy and uh, right now we are in a pandemic right and uh, whatever you have created an, an entrepreneur always creates um, uh, profits not only for himself but he also creates a multitude of jobs uh, for people around so that's what we're doing um yeah. starting up cool and uh, going where you're going all right yeah. and uh, okay yeah so um you mentioned earlier uh, apramiya that you're working with young people inspiring others what are you doing towards this end so one uh, very natural thing i do is keep meeting young entrepreneurs with great ideas right like mm-hmm. you know when we when we started off uh, in 2011 uh, you know we had very limited access to what people uh, you know uh, were doing uh, as information uh, also you know if we wanted angel investors there were very few uh you know the the startup story in india the ecosystem was very very uh, nascent at the time then we, when we uh, started off as a company so i think you know just being there uh, sharing uh, learnings uh, specific to the entrepreneur's journey i think uh, you know is something that i actively do uh, investing is a is an outcome of excitement of the idea and uh, you know belief in the entrepreneur uh so both of these things i i actively do and you know uh, keep participating in various uh forums uh, talking about various aspects of starting up uh success failure whatever it is uh mm-hmm. i think everybody should be aware of what they're getting into when when they're when they're doing a startup i think startups is the way forward uh for many many people today <laughs> What's exciting that you mentioned just now is also the fact uh, about the age group. But if you look at Twitter uh, or LinkedIn, you know sometimes uh, these kind of uh, um, uh, uh, areas platforms actually are for let's say the more um, educated or those who are in the working category of for LinkedIn, unlike Facebook or uh, you know those days it was Friendster. So um, what is cool like? Is it for everybody? Is it for uh, you mentioned eighteen year olds? So what I'm seeing is a diverse age group in Ku. Yeah, so because we're uh, about all kinds of interests, uh, like for example, Olympics is happening, and there are a lot of uh, you know athletes from uh, uh, India who have gone to participate in the Olympics, mm-hmm. and we've also been fortunate to win some medals as medals, well. So yeah. celebration uh, of winning those medals, right? Uh, the athletes are, uh, you know. Uh, poster boys and girls for the youngsters mm-hmm. so for the youngsters to be able to follow them uh learn from them as to how disciplined they were how did they train what was their mental state uh so is very important right and for a person who's si- sitting in a small town for them to hear out the voices of the medal winners in their own language is a very powerful thing it can inspire a lot more people mm. uh they don't have to be dependent on english they can get inspired in their own language because you know if you have to win a medal in weightlifting it doesn't matter what language you speak if you have to win a medal in tennis it doesn't matter what language you speak it is about the discipline and the rigor with which you train and want to win right that has nothing to do with language so i think uh, ku as a platform uh attracts those who want to celebrate uh you know being indian for india right uh, 
uh, and as we go into other countries, it will be a celebration of that particular country and that particular culture and that particular uh, way of thinking and uh, living, right? So I think our, our job is to be away from defining what coup will be, but mm -hmm. giving it as a platform so that it truly reflects the country in which we are operating. I think that is the true success of, uh, of coup. It's a great, I think, well said. It's a great unification tool. I mean, uh, yeah. if you look at India, you know, with all the diverse cultures and the issues, and, and it provides a platform uh, for people to voice uh, their opinion, uh, their grouses. I'm sure you have seen a lot of grouses. I've seen grouses in many, many of these mediums, uh, especially when there's an issue or, or people just want to talk. So actually, Apumaya, you picked on the core uh, human um, uh, want or need to communicate, to talk, to express, to say things. So that's what cool is. But all in all, cool is also like a one-stop center for all Indians or um, anybody uh, anywhere. Okay, but let's look at how um, you are. And I think um, talking about the prime minister, you know, he has also made a call to everyone, you know, to support uh, a local innovation. Like cool. earlier, you mentioned something about uh, your Indian TikTok. I think that was also one of those who won a prize, uh, the Indian version of TikTok. And also now we're talking about um, the future and, and where you're going with uh, Ku, right? Because if you look at, yeah, you said it's a platform for sharing. And then uh, I'm sure the biggest news right now that's going on is, of course, Olympics. But what else do you see people talking or sharing on Ku? Yeah, so people talk about, so there are lots of people who write poems uh, oh. in local languages. Uh, every day, uh, they come up with new thoughts and new poems. Uh, it seems like there's unlimited thoughts uh, to write poems. Um, there are people who share their views on uh, what is happening locally. Uh, you know, there are people who uh, share views on, uh, you know, their you know, let's say a movie is launching on Netflix, they'll come and share their opinion on that. Uh, they will share their opinion, they will share moments that they have spent with their friends on coup. Uh, they will share their opinions on, you know, what is happening uh, in the country in terms of politics. Uh, they will share, uh, you know, their favorite music. So I think it is, a, it is dependent on what you are uh, as a personality and what your interests are. So you will share what you are and you will follow those particular interests that you're interested in. Yeah, and you also have a lot of political people who are also, or, or, or ministries, which are also yeah. on coup, right? And so I think uh, this is great because a lot of uh, things can be, people, is, is there an ability, you see people questioning or there's more, um, um, what do you call that? More uh, talking going on in that sense, you know, Q and A's or something like that. Does that happen on 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 coup? Absolutely, yes. Uh, so I think the the best way to uh, get your information across to the common man, no matter where they are, is in local language, right? And coup is enabling that. Mm. Uh, and once that is enabled, uh, you know, reactions also come. So maybe you are doing uh, some policy with with the right intent but it is not reaching the intended the people, hmm. right? Uh, how do you get feedback, right? Uh, directly from the, from the folks. So who is a great way to keep your ears to the ground and see whether what all the effort that is being done, is, is it hitting the ground or not, right? So I think it's extremely essential and important to be able to communicate without any uh, bias, uh, right? So. Uh, and when you're doing that directly uh, to the end consumer of that information, uh, there is no way anybody can introduce any bias on that, right? Uh, each one will take what they want. Uh, so I think it's it's extremely important uh, a tool uh, for even the government, uh, you know, various departments, uh, you know, the ministers, ministries, everybody to be able to communicate to the common man. Fantastic. And uh, what about things like uh, fake news or, you know, is there any gatekeeping? Does that happen? Or is it taken down? Or is there any monitoring being done on coup? Yeah, so we follow the policy of not being the judge overall, right? So, you know, I think users get really, really uh, annoyed when the platform itself starts judging, 
right? Uh, so that we try to keep away from. What we try and do is there are certain scenarios uh, which are black and white, right? Uh, which universally is accepted that it is right or wrong. Though those are the ones that we actually take action on. Uh, so, for example, you know things like pornography, right? Like you know we don't want to allow pornography on Ku. It's a very straightforward case. If anybody uploads it, that will be taken down, right? Uh, on the other hand. you know something like hate speech right has various kinds of connotation right um, you know somebody say you know uh, makes a point against another person that is not hate speech the way you say it if you call names if you abuse you know all that is bad but in cases where you know 50% of the population will say what is said is right and 50% of the say what is said is wrong those are the cases where we will not be the judge we will tell the community to be involved and go as if somebody is really um, you know annoyed by what has been written they can approach the right authority and get a take down request for that particular uh, statement that has been made and based on that we will we will be uh, we will be able to take an action right uh, taking a judgment call on behalf of uh, folks when there is a 50 50 you know gray area uh, judgment i think is is a wrong thing to do i think that's a, that's a good thing that you mentioned because sometimes uh, we just let to let things go and uh, you know if everything is being taken down then i think in a country which is very vocal like india uh, you know it's going to be a tough job and talking about being vocal we also have a quora like uh, platform right uh, which is vocal uh, so which is also i'm sure hitting waves in india uh our premier yeah yes vocal uh, you know basically to empower the population of a country hmm. one you need free expression so that we are enabling through ku hmm. another is you need to give information to people uh, at at their fingertips and the way the new users on the internet in india are, are using search is through voice they go and ask a question in local language right and to give them answers which are text based or in english is the wrong way to do it right the right way to do it is if you ask a question with voice you should get back a voice answer in the same language right it's it's a very simple thesis and what we've done is we've built a community which basically answers all the questions that india has uh, so india has general knowledge questions questions on career education health uh life love uh so basically everybody wants to be better right mm. uh this is a platform for aspirational india who don't know how to get an answer to their questions uh otherwise right so vocal is a platform which delivers that uh voice answers yeah. in uh, local language and we've been growing like that has also go- grown to about 17 million monthly active users uh Fantastic. so it's growing well that you have the population there and also the people who are interested and i think the digital connectivity in india right i mean uh, i don't think you have much of uh, i think the digital connectivity is um, broadband connectivity is so good uh, and also the community networks um, perhaps in the rural areas i think uh, india is pretty much a very connected country thank you uh, for coming on board uh, aibds um, connect with aibd program